Hello, everyone. Welcome. Oh. So we are hosting our wonderful webinar today, and we're just going to give it a couple of seconds as people join. And then I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction to what we're going to experience today. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? Great, thanks. It's so Good. nice to see all of you. I'd like to say how beautiful you look behind with that silver dress behind you. You look gorgeous in that. Thank you. Background. Thank you. Thank you. This, um, this is actually, Dan and I have um, a picture of Pat Cleveland's skirt behind us. If you saw the whole picture, you would see her gorgeous face and her body. And oh. um, it is a, a, a photograph that is in the Studio 54 exhibit. And Pat Cleveland was, oh. I believe, the first African-American supermodel, right? Melissa? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. She actually refused to live in the United States for a while until there were more African-American models. Really? Yeah, and did move back finally when that changed. So she was also an, an activist and an advocate. So. Very cool woman, indeed. And Sarah, you have colleagues that have had like wonderful, like fantastic yeah. experiences with her too, <laughs> right? Yeah, so a lot of you know um, Anissa, who works with me, Anissa Tejbar. She actually has, has worked very closely with Pat Cleveland and we'll have to get her to share some stories on another day because they're quite fantastic. <laughs> They really are. So how about I just get started and then um, we can jump in because I'm sure everybody wants to see Fan and Sarah. <laughs> so really welcome today to our Lightning in a Bottle part two. So it's a poetry and movement workshop inspired by Studio 54 Night Magic. And we're in partnership with Dancing with Parkinson's and the Koffler Center for the Arts. And I'm Melissa Smith. I'm the Assistant Curator of Community Programs at the AGO. And I'm just gonna start our whole experience today with our land acknowledgement. So we're meeting in a digital space, but the land that the AGO is on is the Mishisagig Nishnabe territory, otherwise known as the Mississauga. And it is also governed by a treaty between the Mississauga of the Credit and the Canadian government. Toronto is a Mishisagig Nishnabe territory. It had also been occupied by other Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee and Wendat confederacies. Ontario continues to be a home to many Indigenous people who live alongside settlers, newcomers, and people whose ancestors were enslaved across the Americas and the Caribbean. So we're grateful to live and work on this land. Recognizing this is a meaningful way and means really making commitments to sharing and upholding responsibilities to all who now live on these lands and the land itself. So let us be mindful of these commitments. And I just also want to re-note if we've had anyone join that um, we're in a meeting style Zoom so that we can see one another and so that we can co-create together. And so you are more than welcome to shut off your video if you prefer not to be seen. So you can do this by clicking on the video camera icon in the bottom left corner. Um, and now I'm just going to do a brief introduction for Fan and Sarah. So Fan Wu moves between activating languages, capacities, and exploring languages beyond. He hosts critical reading, creative writing workshops in Toronto, and you can find um, his writing online at Mice Magazine, Bayes Journal, and Koffler Digital. Uh, Sarah Robichaux is the founder of Dancing with Parkinson's, whose core mission is to bring seniors out of isolation and into an artistic community where they can dance and connect with others. So Sarah provides a fun and safe environment where you can celebrate artistry and the potential of your own movement. So everybody, I really wish a really wonderful workshop to you all and I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you, Melissa. Oh, wonderful. So um, I'll just say, um, introduce a bit of my practice and um, share a bit with you um, the buto that I'm coming from in terms of this poetry dance relationship. Um, and I'm so excited to be here today with the AGO, with Koffler, with Sarah and all of you. It's so good to meet all of you. Um, so I've recently become very interested in the intersections between dance and poetry. I come from a cerebral background where I thought, you know, thinking was the highest activity available um, to us. 
And for most of my life, my adult life, I neglected my body and repressed my own embodiment. So I was lost in this mental activity of writing, which was a kind of imbalanced or incomplete picture. And several practices have changed that bias for me, um, one of which I want to share with you today, a Japanese dance practice called Buto, um, which combines language with movement. And so what we're going to do today after my short introduction is to blend poetry with dance. So in the first half of our workshop, I'll be providing the words and and all of you um, and all of you will respond with movement. And in the second half of the workshop, we'll reverse that so that Sarah will then provide the movement and all of you will, will then become the writers and the poets and respond in language to Sarah's gestures and dance. So now as I give this short introduction to Butoh, I invite all of you to consider your own relationships between language and movement and how they're intertwined. So I'm just gonna share this video of Kazuo Ono, one of the founders of Buto, um, who is dancing this performance called My Mother. So Buto is an avant-garde dance form that came out of post-war Japan in 1959, part partly in reaction to the sort of clean aesthetics of traditional Japanese dance and reacting against certain Western influences. It incorporates rhythms of extreme slowness, playful and grotesque images, and many gestures borrowed from the natural world and from the extremes of the human condition. I think what's crucial for Butoh is that it's not about trained dancers or technical expertise. So that anyone who so that anyone who feels life throbbing through their bodies is capable of doing Buto. And I think that's really important to bring to um, thinking about community dance and the possibilities of any body. Um, I think Buto it melds very well with that, uh, with that kind of principle of dance. And what we're going to be doing today is a particular form of Buto. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll share this other screen with all of you, um, called Buto Fu which is the particular relationship between poetry and dance in Bhutto. It's a kind of Bhutto choreography with words created by Waguri, who is a student of one of Bhutto's founders. And Bhutto Fu uses words to make an imaginative dance space where dancers are invited to physicalize imagery through words. So here, I'll just play this very short clip you see a dancer interpreting the notion of pollen, a space that's thick with a cloud of pollen in the air, according to the poem on the right side, which, so you can look back and forth between the words and the gestures that are being interpreted. So today we welcome you to interpret the words that we give to you of the poem in any way that your body wants to respond. As we celebrate the difference of how our different bodies interpret words uh, with their own different precision. Um, and so the Buto Fu poem I will be reading uses images from traditional Buto landscapes blended with Studio 54 vibes, which as most of you know is an influential nightclub in New York City in the 70s, which is up on exhibit now at the AGO. I'll just close this quick intro uh, of Buto, and if any of you are interested in this form, um, you're more than welcome to um, get in contact with the AGO and with myself. Um, a key quote for Buto is, the vessel that does Buto must maintain a hollow condition. So this hollow condition is sort of a fundamental idea of Buto, where you try to empty yourself of everything you think you know in order to be this receptive vessel for images and the words of images and the images that words conjure. So Buto is this emptiness that gets activated through your own lively interpretation of the poems. Um, so we can become these images and sensations that move through our body and that inspire our movement and our gestures. So without further ado, let's jump in and, and try it ourselves. So now we're going to create movement and these movements are going to come from our own gestures. First, Sarah and I are going to do a little sample um, 
peace between poetry and dance. And so I'll take a deep breath and begin. And should we uh, hit the music as well for this piece? Yes, let's have some music for this piece. And um, I'm still seeing your screen. Then. Yes, OK, okay. now I'm out. Go. Perfect. So as Fan is reading this short piece, we're going to use this just as an example. I'm going to improvise and try and embody the words, the sensations, the feelings um, as Fan reads them, just to give you an idea of what's coming next when we all come together and co-create a piece. We begin with our eyes closed. We begin with our eyes closed. You are a flower stuck in a mirror. You are a flower stuck in a mirror. Slowly rub the surface of the mirror. Slowly rub the surface of the mirror. The shadow of the flower trembles. The shadow of the flower trembles. A ripple of energy moves between you and the flower. A ripple of energy moves between you. Entangle yourself with the flower's gravity. Entangle yourself with the flower's gravity. Finally, your body becomes a blurred flower. Finally, your body becomes a blurred flower. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. My gosh, couldn't you listen to him recite poetry all day long? <laughs> so that uh, was not planned. That was improvised based on absolutely taking in those words and putting them in my body and not thinking. I wasn't thinking, what is everybody going to think looks pretty or nice? I took those words and I let whatever happen in my body, whatever sensations, whatever responses, whatever feelings, and I let it come out. And that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to work on um, with each other today. When Fan is sharing his poetry that he has written, I'd like us not to think of things in a very literal sense. Um, that, that will be probably one of my only sort of uh, tasks for you today in terms of do not think that you have to show drinking water as if drinking water is drinking water. Drinking water could be drinking water. It could be drinking water. It could be drinking because it's more the feeling and the essence of the of the entirety of the words okay so what we're going to do this is going to be really cool we're going to co-create a movement piece based on fans writings fan is going to say the first line a number of times just as he did when i was moving so you'll hear it once you'll react and you'll find a spot that makes sense to you in your body for one gesture, okay? So for example, if I just found this gesture, I just want you to keep doing your gesture. And then I am randomly, very randomly gonna say, Carolyn, we're gonna use yours for that line. And so we'll have our first line of gesture. Then Fan is going to go to the second line. 
And same thing, everybody will find a gesture that makes sense to them. And then we're gonna add the second gesture to the first gesture. And we're gonna piece, we're gonna knit a dance piece together, a movement piece based on your gestures. And when I say I'm gonna be random picking, it's going to be very random. There will be no rhyme or reason. Um, so <laughs> what, what we ask are, are those of you who do have your video on, um, I will be looking to you for, for, your, for your input here, for your movement input. So have fun with it, enjoy it. And Fan, I pass it to you. Thank you, Sarah. So we will begin with our eyes closed and all of our senses, our hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting pose. We are beginning with our eyes closed and all of our senses, our hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting pose. We begin with our eyes closed and all of our senses, hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, are in a resting pose. Beautiful. So I saw this as the first line. Can everyone do this? And fan? Could you read the first line again? We begin with our eyes closed and all of our senses, our hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting pose. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness and your connection to the ground. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness and your connection to the ground. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness and in your connection to the ground. I'm going to take you are a piece of clay here. And we're going to sway for that entire line. Thank you, Fan, when you're ready. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness and in your connection to the ground. And from the beginning? We begin with our eyes closed and all of our senses, our hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting pose. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness and in your connection to the ground. Slowly, you begin to separate out your limbs one by one. You discover anew your arms, your legs, your fingers, your toes. Slowly, from this clay, you begin to separate out your limbs. One by one, you discover your arms, your legs, your fingers, your toes. Slowly, you begin, from clay, to separate out your limbs. You are discovering anew your arms, your legs, your fingers, and your toes. This is 
slowly you begin to separate out your limbs. One by one, you discover your arms, your legs, your fingers, your toes. We began with our eyes closed. All of our senses, our hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting pose. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness and your connection to the ground. Slowly you begin to separate out your limbs. One by one, you discover your arms, your legs, your fingers, your toes. Now, with glacial slowness, you savor the joy of being alive. Your body is a mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth with a warm, liquid pulse. With the slowness of a glacier, you savor the joy of being alive. Your body is a mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth with a warm, liquid pulse. And with the glacier's slowness, you savor the joy of being alive. Your body is a mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth with a warm, liquid pulse. Pulse. With glacial slowness, you savor the joy of being alive. Your body is a mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth with a warm, liquid pulse. We began with our eyes closed and all of our senses our hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting pose. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness and your connection to the ground. Slowly you begin to separate out your limbs. One by one, you discover your arms your legs, your fingers, your toes. With a glacier's slowness, you savor the joy of being alive. Your body is a mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth with a warm, liquid pulse. You exist in a crowd of people who love you who are loved by you, and their auras twirl and tango around your dancing body. You exist in a crowd of people who love you and are loved back, and their auras twirl and tango around your dancing body. You exist in a crowd of people who love you and their auras twirl and tango around your dancing body. You exist in a crowd of people who love you, who are loved by you, and their auras twirl and tango around your dancing We begin with our eyes closed and all of our senses, hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting pose. You are a piece of clay carved from the earth. You do not strive for anything. You rest in your stillness, in your connection to the ground. Slowly, we began to separate out our limbs 
one by one, we discovered our arms, our legs, our fingers, our toes. With a glacier's slowness, we savored the joy of being alive. Our body was a mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth with a warm liquid pulse. We exist in a crowd of people who love us and who are loved by us. And their auras twirl and tango around our dancing bodies. Out of happiness or sheer release, your body begins to grow wings. From every pore of your skin, a long blue feather sprouts. Feel the freedom of those feathers. Out of happiness or sheer release, your body begins to grow wings. From every pore, a long blue feather sprouts. Feel the freedom of those feathers. Out of happiness or sheer release, your body begins to grow wings. From every pore of your skin, a long blue feather sprouts. Sense the freedom of those feathers. Out of happiness or sheer release, your body begins to grow wings. From every pore, a long blue feather sprouts. Feel the freedom of those feathers. We began with our eyes closed, with all of our senses, hearing, touch, taste, smell, and sight, all of our senses in a resting pose. We were a piece of clay carved from the earth. We did not strive for anything. We rested in our stillness, in our connection to the ground. Slowly then, began to separate out our limbs one by one. We discovered anew our arms, our legs, our fingers, our toes. With glacial slowness, we savored the joy of being alive. Our bodies were a mesh of light together, gently strobing back and forth the warm, liquid pulse. Then we existed in a crowd of people who loved us and whom we loved back, and their auras twirled and tangled around our dancing body. Out of happiness or sheer release, our body began to grow wings. From every pore, a long blue feather sprouted, and we felt the freedom of those feathers. Now you take the shape of a heron and take flight. Your powerful wings beating in an effortless, steady rhythm into sky as clear and deep as a lake. Now you take the shape of a heron and take flight. Your powerful wings beating in an effortless, steady rhythm into sky as clear and deep as a lake. Now you take the shape of a heron and take flight, your powerful wings beating in an effortless, steady rhythm into a sky as clear and as deep as a lake. You take the shape the heron and take flight, your powerful wings beating in an effortless, steady rhythm into a sky as clear and as deep as a lake. We began with our eyes closed and all of our senses, our hearing, touch, taste, smell, sight, in a resting 
We were a piece of clay carved from the earth. We didn't strive for anything. We rested in our stillness, in our connection to the ground. Then we slowly began to separate out our limbs, one by one, discovering our arms, our legs, our fingers, our toes. With glacier-like slowness, we savored the joy of being alive. Our body was this mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth with a warm, liquid pulse. We existed in a crowd of people who loved us, who we loved back, and their auras twirled and tangled around our dancing bodies. Then, out of happiness or sheer release, our bodies began to grow wings. From every pore, a long blue feather sprouts. We felt the freedom of having those feathers. Then we took the shape of the heron, and we took flight, our powerful wings beating in an effortless, steady rhythm into a sky as clear and deep as a lake. Now you find a nest, somewhere to stretch your new limb. Somewhere to lay your neck, and from heron you return to your form of quiet, unmoving clay. Now you find a nest, somewhere to stretch your limbs, somewhere to lay your long neck, and now you return to your form of quiet. Unmoving clay. Now you find a nest, somewhere to stretch your limbs, lay down your neck, and now you return to your form of quiet, unmoving clay. So we're going to complete the entire poem, the life cycle of the. From the beginning, and we began with our eyes closed, and all of our senses, our hearing, touch, taste, smell, and sight, in a resting pose. We were this piece of clay carved from the earth. We didn't strive for anything. We rested in our stillness, and in our connection. The ground. Slowly, we began to separate out our limbs one by one, discovering our arms, legs, our fingers, and our toes. Like a glacier, with its slowness, we savored the joy of being alive. Our bodies were a mesh of light, gently strobing back and forth. With a warm and liquid pulse, we existed in a crowd of people who loved us, and who we loved in turn, and their auras would twirl and tangle around our dancing bodies. Out of happiness or sheer release, our bodies began to grow wings, and from every pore of our skin, a long blue feather sprouted. We felt the freedom of those feathers. We took the shape of the heron and took flight. Our powerful wings beating in unison, in an effortless, steady rhythm, into a sky as clear and as deep as a lake. Finally, at last, we found a nest, somewhere to stretch our limbs. Somewhere to lay our neck, and then we returned to our form of quiet, unmoving clay. Take your time to stay in that clay for as long as you.
That was so gorgeous. Um, how much do I love co-creating with all of you? Thank you for those beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gestures and movements. Fan, gorgeous. So Thank gorgeous. you all so much. Oh, it was such a thrill, such a thrill. Thank you. We just made a dance piece to poetry, guys. It was all you. Just magical. So, Fan, what's in store for us now? Now we're going to take a 180-degree turn. <laughs> and so all of you will now take the poet's position. And um, I invite all of you to set your chat function to everyone so that everyone can see your contributions of poetic lines. So that's on the right side uh, of the chat bar. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to witness Sarah as she does improvisatory movements. And she's going to repeat each movement several times. Um, and as as you feel inspired, the same with, um, with the dancing to poetry, see if you can feel the sensation of her movement in your body and translate that into language. Any kind of language that comes up for you. Images, feelings. And I'll be reading these lines of language out as you type them into the chat so that we'll have this continually unfolding collective poem that's going to come out of this. And at the end, I'll pick a line for each gesture at random and we'll have composed a poem together uh, that's based on and inspired by movement. Sarah, if I forgot anything in the instructions. That's exactly it. So. So yeah, it's a we're doing a total reverse now. So I'm going to do each gesture um, over and over. And as Fan said, just put your thoughts. They don't have to be complete thoughts. Um, it does not have to be a huge long sentence. You know, a few words. And and we're gonna build a beautiful piece of poetry. Okay. So I'll do the gesture a number of times to give you time. And um, and uh, Fan will, will read out many of them and then very randomly again, he's going to take a line that's going to be the random line that he chooses to build the piece, okay? Um, Danny, when you have a sec, can you please change the music to the second track, please? Okay, so I'm gonna start with my first gesture. Peace within my body, warm light, awakening when a silver bird overlooks the dancer, capturing the beauty, catching the moonbeam, fleeting, grasp the heart, watching the sunrise, morning sky, she opens her heart, gazing into the universe. The world is a beautiful place today. Finding the source to grasp the earth and the stars. Dancing between the world of spirit and body. Letting go. Bringing energy into me. The dancer grasps the bird. In the universe, feeling the wholeness of the earth. Swing with light. With our dance, we unite our hearts. Absorb it all. Abundance. Spreading love. Joy. Joy. Share the joy sharing joy with the world synchronicity with the world with our dance we unite our souls 
with our dance, we unite our hearts. In our shimmering lives, we're all one. Peace, freedom, we raise it up to the sky. In our shimmering lives, power is within me. Swimming energy. Swimming energy. Reach beyond our reach. Reach to all and everything. Exploring the universe together. With togetherness we thrive. Floating. Flowing together. Searching for a thing. Swimming to the depths of our souls. Bursting forth as a seed. Breaking free from the earth. Searching, searching, searching for a thing. Seeing beyond, beyond the horizon, universal love. Freeing ourselves from separation, freeing ourselves from loneliness. Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere in the depths of the sea, depths of the ocean. Knitting connections, opening up to love, no boundaries, so much abundance, the joy is within ourselves, reaching to the unknown, knitting connections, no boundaries, so much abundance. No boundaries, so much abundance. Traveling through light. Embraced in the light, expanding through the universe, power, power from our souls, seeing the beauty in each other, she stops briefly. Sorry, sorry, can you say again? Can we go back to the beginning? And do you have your selections picked out? Yeah, how many gestures um, did you do just to make sure that we match up? I think I did five. Five, okay, great. All right. To grasp the earth and the stars, with our dance we unite our souls. To grasp the earth and the stars with our dance, we unite our souls. To grasp the earth and the stars with our dance, we unite our souls. Reach beyond our reach, with togetherness we thrive. Reaching beyond our reach, with togetherness we thrive. Reaching beyond our reach, with togetherness we thrive. Bursting forth as a seed, breaking free from the earth. Bursting forth as a seed, breaking free from the earth. Bursting forth as a seed, breaking free from the earth. No boundaries, so much abundance. No boundaries, so much abundance. No boundaries, so much abundance. 
seeing the beauty in each other, she stops briefly. Seeing the beauty in each other, she stops briefly. Seeing the beauty in each other, she stops briefly. I almost got it right. <laughs> Perfect. That, that's stunning. That's stunning. Can we now just listen to the poem all on its own? We can take away the dance now and, and really listen a number of times to the beautiful poetry that you all made based on, on movement. I'm excited. Thanks, Dan. To grasp the earth and the stars with our dance, we unite our souls. Reaching beyond our reach, with togetherness we thrive. Bursting forth as a seed breaking free from the earth. No boundaries, with so much abundance. Seeing the beauty in each other, she stops briefly. I feel like I want someone else to read the poem. If anyone wants to unmute themselves and give it a read. Can I volunteer someone? <laughs> I will, Sarah. Thank you, Mara. We'd love You're to welcome. Meet. Are you showing me the words? So the words are in the chat. Okay. Um. I have, and uh, where do I start? You uh, go scroll down to the bottom of the chat and you'll see Fan Wu to everyone and also Melissa to everyone. Down to the bottom? Yeah. Fan? That's it. Oh. Yeah. No, not yet. To grasp the earth, is that the beginning? Yes, exactly. Yes. yes? And oops, maybe I won't be doing this. Sorry. You're doing great to grasp the earth. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. No worries. Okay. To grasp the earth and the stars with our dance, we unite our souls. Reach beyond our reach. With togetherness, we thrive. Bursting forth as a sea breaking from the earth. No boundaries, so much abundance. Seeing the beauty in each other, she stops briefly. Did I get it? Thank you so much. Perfect. I hope our session today has um, inspired all of you to think about this entwinement of, of poetry and dance. And that, you know, at home, you could have someone read a poem out to you. Um, and have it have them repeat the lines, and you can that can be your choreography. That can be the sort of seedbed for you to to move to those words, and vice versa. If you see a piece of dance, I hope you're all inspired to write to it and to let the poetry of of the dance seep out in language. Also, I um I wanted to say a huge thank you to Fan. What a uh... What an exquisite experience to work with you um, leading up to this workshop and today at this workshop. Um, what a gift. And to AGO, and AGO at Home, and the Cochlear Gallery, um, and all of you dancers who have come today to create art with us and explore and, and enrich our lives um, in a way for which I'm truly grateful. And a huge thank you to Sarah, who is just the easiest, most natural collaborator. And I'm sure many of you already know her, her charms and her talents. And it's been incredible to work with her and with all of you today. And I hope to be back with Dancing with Parkinson's at some point. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely, wonderful day.
Thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you oh, so yeah. much. Thank you, everyone, so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.